Yo, what is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel and for those of you who are new Don't forget to subscribe down below if you do enjoy today's video, but today we got the first interior mod for the M5 um, Most of you will know obviously from the title and thumbnail, but uh, we're doing the uh, Start button as well as the M1 and M2 button. So I told you guys in the beginning that I wanted to do the whole car theme blue uh, I did have thoughts of changing it up but I think I'm gonna keep the blue for a while, rock it, and then maybe later on we'll actually change like the whole color of the car, like with the wrap, uh, and then we'll change the calipers and stuff like that. But for now, I think I'm gonna keep the blue for a little while. Uh, it is a very nice blue either way. Uh, you guys can see right here, that's the factory blue. And we got some blue buttons, so. So here's the buttons that I got, guys. Uh, let me go ahead and take them out the packaging real quick. So here are the buttons. Um, I did get them from different sellers, so I'm not sure if you guys can tell too much on camera uh, but they are very very slightly different blues uh, this one is very slightly uh, darker actually I think you can tell a little bit more on camera than you actually can in person uh, the only thing I was worried about is that they have like super super light blues and like really dark blues from what I've seen in pictures and stuff and they have one that has like sparkles and um, I just didn't want to run into a problem like that buying it from different sellers but I couldn't find anybody who sold the whole set um, the ones I did find were like 80 bucks and I wasn't trying to spend that much so I will have these linked down below if you guys want to uh, do this to your car as well. Uh, not everybody has the M1 and M2 button but I know like even if you don't have M buttons you can still switch them uh, if I'm correct and uh, for those E series I'm pretty sure you can still switch the top button to be an M button. So I'm going to have all that linked down below in the description so you guys can check it out uh, as well as these different buttons. So I'll go ahead and put pictures on the screen right now but E series has its own button. Uh, which looks like this and then F series without the star stop button has a different button as well Which looks like this and then there's mine, which is like the one I just showed you guys. that looks like this um, Very slight changes in the F series ones, but they're still there. They won't fit if you don't get the right one besides these um, I'm pretty sure these fit the same for every F series um, Whether it's like 2 series or 7 series uh, I think it's the same. I'm not 100% sure because some actually say that it only fits like 2, 3, and 4 series, but then there's some that say they fit everything, so I'm not too sure, but if you guys know, then uh, obviously you guys can figure that out, but I'm going to go ahead and link all this down below in the description for you guys to check out. Unfortunately, to actually change these out, you have to take apart the whole steering wheel, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that in today's video, and then this button is supposed to just come out. I know the one that I had on the 535, which didn't have the auto uh, off button. I had to take off the whole like trim and then unscrew it from the back, open it up and stuff. So I'm going to try and see if I can just take this off. It did come with a very, very little flat head. So maybe I'll try to just pry it out uh, very gently and see if it comes out. If it doesn't, then I will probably just uh, take it apart and show you guys how to do that. But yeah, so without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So you guys can see right here. The little flathead that I was talking about that it came with so what I'm gonna try to do before I take it off is just go ahead and put this in the little groove and pry out very gently that way I don't scratch anything um, but yeah just using very little force because if you use too much force obviously you can either like scratch it or something so yeah very little force guys if it doesn't come off then obviously we'll just take, uh, go ahead and take out the whole trim but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the little groove okay guys so um what I did is I did exactly what I was showing you guys right now, but I put a uh, painter's tape on the edges right here just to make sure I don't really damage this little like uh, silver piece around it. I pried it only from one side. So what I did is I kind of put the, the little screwdriver in and pried it a little bit and then held it with my finger and then again put the screwdriver a little bit farther in, pried it, held it with my finger again and then once again put the screwdriver a little bit further in, pried it and it eventually all came out. So it was actually really easy. Uh, for those of you that don't have the auto start stop, you might actually have to uh, take off the trim and then take off this actual start button thingy um, from the back, which would be hold on with Torx. I believe three Torx, uh, probably T20s. And then after that, you can just take it apart. It's held on by clips. And then you can push this out from the back. Um, but yeah, it's very simple, guys. But I wanted to try it without taking everything apart because it's just a little bit more time consuming to take all this off. So yeah, this is off guys. Now if I go ahead and get the blue one and then go ahead and line it up and then just push it straight in. And as you guys can see, there it is. And it actually looks so sick guys. It looks so much better than the black. Oh yes, I can't wait to put these on. 
Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Uh, for this one, I am gonna go ahead and disconnect the batteries. So, let's go ahead and go to the trunk, disconnect the battery, and then we'll wait a few minutes, and then uh, go ahead and start taking all this off. All right, guys, so moving on to the trunk, we're gonna go ahead and lift it. And then here, there will be two screws. There's one right here, and there's one over here. My 535 actually didn't have this, so yours might not have it either, but just in case it does, it's gonna be those two right there. Now, if we go ahead and lift this, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal. Also a 10 millimeter. For those of you who don't know, just go ahead and loosen it a little bit, pull it off, pull it to the side, put something there just to make sure it doesn't touch the terminal again. And um, that should be it. I do have a powered trunk, so I don't think it will actually fall, but for those of you who don't, uh, you might want to go ahead and grab like a microfiber towel or something and just go ahead and put it through the loop and tie it just in case it does fall and close. Uh, you won't be screwed. All right, guys. So uh, I've had the batteries connected for like 10 minutes, maybe. So I think it's good enough to continue now. Uh, sorry if you guys hear like a lot of noise in the background. I do have uh, gardeners here at the neighbor's house, and there's not really much I can do about that. But yeah, sorry about the noise. But to actually take off the airbag, there's going to be two holes under the steering wheel. You guys can see one right there, and the other one is directly on the other side right here you guys actually can't see due to the light i'm sorry but it's right here so yeah what you want to do is stick a flathead directly in the hole okay guys once again sorry for the noise but what we're going to do is basically get a screwdriver stick it into the hole uh you will feel like a little bit of pressure what you want to do is push in and then pull the air back out you guys can see it came out a little bit you can do the same exact thing to the other side so push the screwdriver in Push the airbag out. As you're pulling the airbag out, slowly uh, let go of the screwdriver because uh, it'll hold it in place a little bit. And as you guys can see, the whole airbag came out. Now, let me go ahead and take you guys off the tripod real quick to show you. So here, you guys can see if I pull the airbag out a little bit, you guys can see where it's actually connected from. So of course, there's like horrible lighting, but what you want to do is get a flathead. And you guys can see this clip that's right there. You want to go from the back and then basically push the clip in and pull the whole thing out at the same time and just be careful because the airbag will like literally just fall out but you're gonna go ahead and do that push the clip in pry the whole thing out and you guys can see it start coming out so i'm gonna go ahead and pull it out uh with the airbag that way i don't drop it but i think it came off far enough so that the whole thing just comes straight out and we have the airbag right here put this somewhere safely where it won't get damaged or scratch it up or anything. I'm gonna just put it here on the seats. There's not really anything to scratch it. And you guys can see a whole bunch of stuff here. So we're gonna start by disconnecting some wires here that go directly onto like the car. This being one of them, I'm pretty sure this will just pull out. You guys can see right there. Same with this bottom one right here. I'm pretty sure it should just pull straight out. As you guys can see, that one's out. So now that there's actually nothing connected to the actual car, all these wires are uh, from the actual steering wheel. What we're gonna do is get a socket. I'm not exactly sure what size it is. I will let you guys know right now, but we're gonna go ahead and um, put a socket here and take off the bolts. Okay guys, so I'll be using a 5.8. I'm not too sure if you guys can see that too good. to actually take this off. Uh, I'm not sure if this is like the exact size, but it fits like literally perfect. So I'm gonna just use that and obviously a ratchet to take it off. And there you go. Now I can go ahead and just unscrew it all the way and this right here is the bolts as you guys can see so just go ahead and put this in a safe place uh obviously i'm gonna put it in the car probably just like in the passenger side i'm gonna to put that there and the whole steering wheel should just go ahead and come out now so let's go ahead and give it a try Oof. and as you guys can see the whole thing came out so earlier i said we have to take apart the whole steering wheel and that's actually what we have to do so we have to take off this trim piece right here as well as the paddle shifters that are back here and obviously these little control uh buttons right here because this is where the buttons are actually going to go uh we probably don't have to take it off this side but take it off this side for sure so i'm going to go ahead and take you guys inside and uh, get started all right guys so i'm actually just going to do this outside uh, i did put the camera in a way where it's currently recording upside down but i can technically flip it when i'm editing and it should look good so hopefully everything does come out good. But every bolt that we are taking off is going to be a T20. Not too sure if you guys can see that too good, but T20. Uh, somewhere there. 
And yeah, so the first thing we're gonna do is take off the trim. So to take off the trim, there's gonna be a few bolts, uh, three to be exact. There's gonna be one right here that I'm pointing at right there. There's gonna be another one right here that I'm pointing at. And there's gonna be one in the back that you guys can see right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those three off real quick. Those three bolts are off. So now if I go ahead and flip this over, I should be able to just pry this thing out. So do it gently, just to make sure you don't break anything because these plastics are a little fragile. So very gently and with a lot of patience, this should come out. I did hear a click, which was a little scary, but everything looks good. Now just go ahead and wiggle this out a little bit from the bottom. And you guys can see it's all out. So everything looks to be in one piece. Put this in a very safe place, guys. Once again, everything in this car, you gotta put it in a very safe place so you don't mess anything up or lose anything. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side. As well as the bolts, you guys don't wanna lose the bolts. Now what we can do is actually take off the paddle shifters. So to take those off, what you wanna do is take off this bolt right here, which is right there that I'm pointing at. So there's another one gonna be right there that I'm pointing at. And uh, it should just be those two, and that will actually not take these off completely, but loosen them so uh, there's actually a space back here to take off the bolt that we need to take off these little controls right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take those two off. Again, they're going to be T20s. And you guys want to put the bolts for everything in, um, like, separated. That way you don't get them mixed up. But in, like, a way that you know what each bolt is for, because obviously you don't want to put them somewhere and then... You don't know what those are for, so. I'm gonna go ahead and hold the paddle shifters from the back. But if we flip it over, these should come out, as you guys can see. And if I put them down a little bit, you guys can see that it exposes two bolts. Uh, these two bolts are black. So there's one right there. And there's another one right there, you guys can see them. Again, T20s, so. I'm gonna go ahead and take those two off. Wait, now that I remember, only one of them is coming off, not both of them. So. Yeah, put the back on. You actually didn't have to take off this side off because we're only taking off one side because the buttons only go on one side. So yeah, kind of forgot. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this side on real quick because we actually don't need to do anything over here. So this side's back on. You guys can feel how it works. Over here though, we can take off this bolt that I was talking about right there. Again, T20. All these are T20s. Okay guys, so the bolt is off and the bolt actually stayed in there, but you can push it out from the bottom. The actual control already came off as you guys can see right here. Um, so we don't have to take it completely off the control you can just leave it like that for now put this bolt to the side where you don't lose it okay guys so I'm, what I'm gonna do here is put a microfiber towel uh, like on the inside part of the steering wheel that way uh, once we flip this over it's actually laying on the microfiber towel and not on uh, like metal or whatever uh, that way it doesn't scratch the buttons on this side but yeah there's gonna be three Phillips bolts one two three you're gonna take those off real quick. Put those three bolts right there. Now we can actually take off this cover right here. I wanna be very gentle with this stuff, guys. All right, so I took this piece off after I unbolted it. I separated it and this is one piece. You can see two little white things. The other one actually got st stuck over here. You can either leave it there or take it off and put it back in its groove. Where it goes is gonna be right here next to this one. Um, you can like just leave it on there. It will go back into place So what you want to do here is flip it over but hold these two in place so you can see uh, the buttons So M1 M2 so if you flip it over you're gonna take off these two buttons M1 is gonna be uh, Right here M2 is gonna be right here. What we can do here is you take a very 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 small flathead uh, You can actually use the one that came with um, The start button if you did buy one or if not just use your own little flathead screwdriver and what you want to do here is actually there's two clips on each one there's one right here and then there's one right here as well as the bottom there's one right here and there's one right here I think uh, I took the little flathead a little too serious I don't really have a lot of grip here <laughs> okay guys so what you want to do is actually uh, push down and then you want to pry it from the edges but at the same time what I'm gonna do is actually uh, grab it from here and pry it out from here as I'm actually prying out the little clips. That way it's helping me to actually like pull the button out. So I'm prying out how I just told you guys from the side and I'm gonna pry out these buttons right here. So 
So that one's off right there. And then that one's off right there. So now if I go ahead and turn it to the side, the button will come straight out. As you guys can see, I'm gonna put this down real quick. So we will be doing the same exact thing, prying it out with my uh, finger from the side. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm gonna pry out these two little clips. So it's gonna be one right here. One, that one's off. And then there's gonna be this one right here. That one should be off. So now, oh, I pushed it back in on accident. So do it again. That one should be off. Do that one. Now if I go ahead and flip it to the side, the bunch should come straight out. As you guys can see right there. Now, um, I don't think these white things will actually come out. So if we go ahead and flip it over, you guys can see how it looks right here. Now you want to take your buttons. You should know where M1 and M2 is. Obviously M1 is going to be on top, M2 is going to be the bottom. You guys can see they look exactly the same. So what we want to do is just line it up. You guys can see how it's lined up. So there is like two little crosses, uh, kind of, right here. And there's one over here. And the clips also only go one way. So it has to line up. If not, the button actually won't go in. So it should be lined up right there. Now I can just go ahead and push it in. And that's basically it. This button is not coming off at all anymore. We're going to do the same exact thing with the bottom one. Again, it will only go in one way. It will only go in and clip in if it's lined up. So I lined it up, pushed it in, and you guys can see the buttons are not on. So if we come over here and try to pry it, these buttons are not coming off at all. So these look super good. So now what we're going to do is put this back onto its little module. So you just want to go ahead and line it up. Make sure if yours is how mine is with one little white thing over here. Make sure it lines up as you're putting it on. I'm going to go ahead and get these screws and put them on the side. Get these buttons. Move them to the side. Get these screwdrivers. Move them to the side. And get this towel and move it so we have a little bit more room here now. And like I said, you just want to make sure it lines up as you're putting it on. And it actually lined up perfect. And at this point, you can actually test them out to see if they click. So they all seem to be clicking just fine. So what I'm going to do here is actually put on the three Phillips screws back on to hold this piece back into place. There goes one, two, and three. Back on right here. So now we're going to go ahead and do exactly what we did, guys. Uh, taking it off. Just go ahead and put, place this back on. Again, you can test out your buttons right here. Make sure everything's working. Everything feels good. Flip it over. And put the screw back on right here. It's going to be a black one. Make sure you guys do not over tighten. Just tighten them until... It feels like snug. Now if you go ahead and flip it over, everything is on good now. These buttons work perfectly fine. And now we can go ahead and assemble the rest of the steering wheel. Um, first, obviously, we're going to put on the pedal shifter. And then once that's on, we can go ahead and put on the trim piece back on, tighten the bolts, plug these back in, and then put the airbag back in, and everything should be perfect. So as of right now, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and put everything back on off camera. That way you guys don't just sit here watching me uh, do this. Uh, so I'm going to put everything back on, and then once it comes time to put the steering wheel back onto the actual car, then I'll pick up the camera again to show you guys everything that I do. So yeah, anyways, let me go ahead and put this back on real quick. Okay guys, so everything is actually back on the steering wheel now. As you guys can see, the buttons look super sick. Um, the trim, paddle shifters, everything's back on. So now we can go ahead and slide this back on to the car. Um, I don't know if you guys can really see that too good, but there is a groove on the bottom of here. So this will only go in one way. So if you take the steering off like this, it will literally only go on like this. If you take it off upside down, it will only go on upside down. I took it off somewhat straight. So it's only going to go on somewhat straight, line it up, and go straight on. So now if I get the bolt and put it on, hand tighten this on, like so, and you should be good. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I did look online and I couldn't find anything specific to the F10 for a wheel uh, steering wheel torque spec. So I'm going to just go ahead and hand tighten it until I think it's tight enough. Um, and we'll just hope that it does not fall off while I'm driving. But ah, that should be tight enough right there. That should not be going anywhere. Anyways, guys, we're going to go ahead and plug this one back in. It should literally just go straight into place. Like so. Same with this top one. Straight into place. Now, all that's left is to get the actual steering wheel, which is right here. And then go ahead, place it back on. But before we actually push it back on or anything, 
we're gonna go ahead and plug it in so go ahead and line it up push the plug in as far as it goes and now we can go ahead make sure there's no wires in the way or anything so we're gonna line it up to where it looks straight and then technically should just clip back into place like so Ooh, and you guys can see the buttons right there it looks super good so that should be it guys now let me go ahead and plug the battery in real quick and um, we'll make sure everything works okay guys first startup with the new buttons and hopefully there's no airbag lights because I did see some people say there was airbag lights all you really have to do is clear them but they're like if there's no airbag lights that's even better so I think I'm gonna turn it on real quick just to make sure lights at all perfect and if we go ahead and test it out that's m1 right there now m2 m2 right there so that's pretty dope this looks so sick guys this is such like a very very small mod but it makes like one of the biggest differences because you literally like look and touch this every single day obviously every time you want to select the car you have to press that and if you have an m5 or really any m car you're you're constantly pressing these buttons guys at least m1 i don't really use m2 too much but m1 for sure every single day but there you go guys that's basically the install this is actually very quick and easy it just uh it took me a little while because i wanted to show you guys obviously how to do it and be a little bit like in depth with like the, the install uh but if you guys are just doing this obviously without recording it should be pretty simple it should take no more than like honestly like 20 minutes uh if you're confident with what you're doing 15 20 minutes is a pretty good time um if you're doing this very confidently but yeah guys if you did enjoy today's video make sure to give it a huge thumbs up if you did enjoy it or uh find this video useful or helpful please make sure to subscribe down below as well you would really be helping the channel uh but yeah Please guys, if there's anything you guys want to see, make sure to leave it in the comments below. I do read all the comments. I uh, really appreciate all the support you guys have been showing recently. We're going to try to go for 4,000 subscribers before the year ends, guys. We have uh, just a little over a month, uh, but I think we can do it. So I'm going to try to bring out some videos for you guys, and hope you guys can enjoy them, and we can get to 4K subscribers before the year ends. Uh, but yeah, anyways guys, with all that being said, please stay tuned for future videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.